back at it with another build biology, but this time it's something that I've never seen before and I actually know nothing about. It would be the fastest car we've ever had here. And, uh, whoa, it's not even a car at all. It's just an engine right now. I'm here with Kenny. How you doing? Good, Steve thank you. Of uh, the Speed Demon Racing team. And they've brought us the fastest car ever, but right now we're just looking at the inside of it. Can you tell me, Kenny, a little bit about what we have going on here? Well, this happens to be one of four engines that we have for a variety of classes at Bonneville. This one is the latest version. It's a LS design, the late bottle GM engine mm -hmm. architecture, dark block, dark heads. Everything is one-off stuff. It's 443 cubic inches. We dynoed the other day at 2620, about where we run it. When 2620. Horsepower. Correct, yeah. 2,000, however you can say that. <laughs> 2620 yeah. in the yeah, horsepower. No decimal points. So, wow. Just so we're clear, what we're talking about here is land speed record. Correct, yes. So we've got a land speed record car that does not fit inside here. That's why we're in here with the engine. We're going to have to go outside and check out the car, which they did bring. We'll get to the engine first because that was the easy accessible thing. And I see a lot of custom work already through the manifolds and everything nope. you have going on. Everything billet or cast? Yeah. Billet. Everything's billet. The thing with an engine like this, there will be not one single bolt nut component that was built by OEM manufacturer. Really? So these are purpose built. We call them Chevrolets because we have a Chevrolet bore center sure. on the engine. Yeah. If you look the parts up in a catalog, it'd be listed under a Chevrolet. At the end of the day though, they are just a specific built engine. The interesting thing about these engines is they deviate very little or not at all from a drag race motor. Mm -hmm. So this engine could very easily be used in a drag race application. Sure. Just and what I'm looking at here with the fuel setup. Explain this yeah. a little bit. Well, see what we have is a couple injectors. And we have direct. two electronic nozzles, which flow about 550 pounds of fuel per hour. And then we have a mechanical nozzle that acts like a power enrichment circuit. But when these guys are used up, this, the mechanical injector is brought on at a, a certain manifold pressure and engine RPM. Your base minimum power is about 2,500 without that. Mm -hmm. Anytime we go above about 2,200, we like to bring that extra bit of fuel in to cool the engine off. And that's from the mechanical Yeah, it's kind of like a hybrid system. It'd be what you'd have in the mechanical injection system of years ago, combined with the modern day electronics. I was speaking with Steve earlier about that, <laughs> and that was because uh, the injectors are <laughs> maximum duty size. They really don't like to be at 100% duty cycle for any length of time. Yeah. The fuel flow definitely falls off. The nice thing about that mechanical system allows us to pull the injector pulse width back, puts it in the sweet spot again. That's cool to me. I, I just like seeing the fabrication in, involved with all of this as yeah, well. This is a just Keith, Keith Wilson built manifold. That was to be a billet piece. They ran out of time to do it in billet, so they yeah. did a hand fab job on it. But yeah, it's, they did a great job. It looks awesome. Yeah. I, I like the hand fab job because I, I bet it would look cool mm. in billet, but I just like to see that this is all welded in. And mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise it'd just up. be a nicely machined yeah. piece of aluminum. And so you got a but we run beefed up coils, ignition as well. What you call coil near plug or mm -hmm. coil on plug yeah. is, a, is a term. And we do that for a good reason because the actual timing is very, very good between events and between cylinders. Almost the perfect venue for that. These things along with a good ignition box that we use, an m &W ignition, they'll fire just about any amount of fuel we put in the engine. That's crazy. Those are big boxes too. And I'd see everything is dry sump? Yes, it is a dry sump. Aviad pump. And the uh, pan looks relatively narrow even for this the is a weird, sump. This is kind of a weird deal because the LS pan is a flat pan. This one has an adapter mm -hmm. and then a spacer and then the oil pan. Okay. And that was all necessary to, to get the rod to clear the pan. Otherwise it's just going to yeah. smack in but the bottom of it. Yeah, but it's definitely leak proof. We hate oil leaks. This was a, a good way to eliminate a couple of them. Yeah, it's cool. And then this is just the capacity of oil right it's here. 14 quart. 14 quarts, mm -hmm. it's quite a bit, but I'd imagine at that amount of power and this The oil gets, starts to get a little warm. These engines tend to keep a lot of oil up on the top. If you pull the valve covers after you ran it, the oil would run out on the headers. Mm -hmm. We actually have a plug or a drain in the back of the head. Really? Right here, it's a, it's a small drain. As soon as you shut the engine off, it drains the oil level below the, oh, the wow. valve cover rail. You can pull the valve cover off without having a mess. But there is probably a couple of quarts, three quarts of oil in suspension all the time. Let's see, you got a damper way back in here, which is kind of hard to see because of these plates and these plates are pretty slick too. Yeah this is this is the front motor plate that attaches it to the chassis. What is the duration that you guys run this? Like, like typical how long run, is it going to go? Typical five miles takes a minute and ten seconds. A minute and ten seconds for five That's miles. That's from from the time the wheels roll on the car mm -hmm. till he's closed the throttle at the finish line. And what speed do you think you're going to see with with this engine? Right? If everything works and the traction is there it should exit over 460. 
So this motor, do you deal with anything as far as, as heat or is it just so much air moving into the it? The thing that we really work on the heat conditioning is the, the headers are wrapped with a titanium wrap to keep the, what we call the engine bay temperature normal. Yeah. The cooling capacity for the water is up 20 gallons of water. No radiator involved. These hoses go to the water tank. Water is pulled back in the inlet of the pump here. Our water temperature will start at about 100 degrees and end at about 150. Wow, so that's really cool. not bad. Are you talking Celsius? <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're talking Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. Can't get me so there. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's not bad, really. The intercooler is 16 gallons of water in the intercooler, and we put 10 bags of ice in it, 10 pound bags. Wow. And it melts all the ice in the run. Mm. But our intake air temps will be in the 120 range. Wow. Considering that they're leaving the turbo at about 400 degrees, that's a pretty good drop. Yeah. How do you drive this thing? What's going to drive? What kind of, I don't know how the clutch engagement or anything. What we have is literally nothing more than a Pro Mod dual disc clutch. Mm -hmm. We only utilize the clutch to run it on the engines on the, when it's on the stands or something like that. And it's just the necessary coupling between the crankshaft and the transmission. He would not be able to push the clutch in at any kind of RPM because of the <clears throat> centrifugal effect of the counterweights. And I know that the gearing on these is just wild. To get this started, you can't, you can't just drive it out, right? It has to be pulled or towed? I suppose you could. Uh, we worked through that scenario over the years where you had to push it up to 70 miles an hour to pull away because it had a 180 mile an hour low gear. When Craig Liberty agreed to build a seven speed clutchless transmission for us, we just put a, a really low, low gear in it. Mm -hmm. So at 30 miles an hour, the driver just pokes it in gear and just takes off. And how hard will this accelerate then? Because it, is it- It's heavily in traction it... control up to 400 miles an hour or better. Everything's really modulated then. Yeah, we work with a boost because you have to control the boost because you can't just throw it all at it at, at once. And then we have the ability to control the wheel speed. Between the two of them, it's just a, a match for the speed. You know, if you get 7% wheel slip, you'll have that 7% for probably the first four miles. Wow. And it'll dumb the power down significantly to keep that wheel slip in that range. I'm just getting excited to see the car now because I've not really seen too many motors in here that are over 2000 horsepower. It's cool to see this sitting on the stand ready to go in, but I'm interested to see what we have going on outside. All right, Steve, this is your area. Yeah. Tell me about what we have going on here. This is a land speed car. Uh, this is our Speed Demon car we built in 2015. George Petit owns it and drives it. It's been over 400 miles an hour 44 times. 44 times it's yes. gone over 400 miles per hour. Yes. Now, just upon the exterior of this, because this is so wild. We've seen nothing like this. You can't see anything. It's so low to the ground. It's so streamlined. Now, what is the outside made of? It's all carbon fiber. It's all carbon fiber, yep. How long does this kind of process take for making well, the exterior? <laughs> carbon Kenny at Kenny's Components did it in just under five months. Five months. Start to finish. That is a long time. Yes. That's a lot of work. It was a lot of work I mean, to get the it. molds and get them from California to North Carolina. It's got parallel front wheels that are in line with each other. That's how we get the front so narrow. How wide is it? 42 or 46 inches at the rear wheels. In the rear? Yeah. Does this spend uh, quite a bit of time in a wind tunnel or? We only went to the wind tunnel once. It's all done by CAD design. It looks like an aircraft that's just been buried into the ground. No wing. You'd expect to see a wing about where you're standing right yeah. now. It's incredible to me that this will even stay as straight as it will. And for the stability of it, how does that work with, I guess, just the CAD design? Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Just... it goes pretty straight all by itself. A Nemesis aircraft, I think, had a lot to do with the design of it in Mojave, and, and they did a pretty good job. This car's been very successful. What are these, these are, things we have This is top? a fire door, so if, you catch, if it's on fire, they can actually, we have fire systems here, but they can actually stick a fire extinguisher in there okay. and put a fire out. And then this is how we fill the intercooler. That's the intercooler tank there. So we, yeah, that's where we dump water. all the ice and it's where we put the fuel in. So what's going on back here? We even got a camera back here. Yeah, these are the parachutes. So they're DJ27 parachutes. Got like a 65 foot cord on them. Replay does all the cameras for us. And these are the balls that we push. When we push it, they got balls in it. So the push truck can't make the car oh, go sideways. Gotcha. They'll just roll on the balls. Are the chutes deployed every run? Yes. They are? Yes. So it set some records? Yes. I think they told me when we were at a car show, there's like 16 records, five or six FIA records, and seven hot rod trophies in a row. I can't imagine all the time that's involved in, in just making this stuff here. We start, start to finish was nine and a half months. And what is this, what this, is this for? We went to the wind tunnel, we had an actual airfoil on here. Oh, okay. Things that are on each side. 
We can actually generate another 800 pounds of downforce. Mm -hmm. But that's going to create drag. We went out without it, and we right out of the box, the first run, it went 406 miles an hour or something. I'm like, well, why would we screw up a good thing? Yeah. And, All of this is pretty easy to take off, it looks like. Yes. We could have this thing apart in about five minutes. Wow. That's cool. And this is the exhaust. Yeah. And it's just coming straight off the turbos then. Yes. And it generates quite a bit of downforce. The, the exhaust yes. does. So that's why the placement was there. That's a calculated yeah. placement for the exhaust. Yes. And it's actually calculated for the air intake too. So on, on the CAD design on the, on the wind tunnel, this is a big red area right here, mm -hmm. which means it's high pressure. So yeah. it's a perfect place to suck the air from. And you have a battery source down here? We plug in here, we have a battery charger on board. So mm -hmm. we just plug 110 in there, you turn the power on, and these are our quick release for the hydraulic jacks. Oh, okay. So we can lift the car yeah. up and put the wheels on. Because this is obviously not going to go anywhere <laughs> where it is right now, except Once, for on the soft flat. Yes. Now, about the cockpit. Like, I, how easy is it to get in and out of this thing? So this right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's such a slick looking system too. That's so cool. Wow, he's basically laid straight back, huh? Yep. Tiny little wheel. Wow. Three pedals down there. Runs a Motec? Yep, car runs completely on Motec. The motor ECU and the car itself is all controlled by Motec. These are the parachute levers. These are the chutes? Yeah, you just push them forward. So these are the safeties that are on now. Mm -hmm. Pull the safety off. You just so push them forward. Does he do one individually? Yeah, he'll put, put one and he usually only uses one chute. One the other one's just a safety. This is for safety, okay. That's a, actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be inside there. Like it's a, a lot more space. Now, does he have padding and stuff that they put no, in there? No, we, we actually poured a seat for George and he really didn't like it. He likes it just like that. Just to so, be opened up? Yep, that's it's what less he likes. claustrophobic than? He got in it with the padding in it and said, took it out and we got it on a shelf at the shop and it never went back in. And what is this made of? Yeah. That's all aluminum. Aluminum? Yep. And all this is as well? Yeah, yeah a gentleman by the name of Larry Stork did all the interior work for us. Man, that's a, and that's all the visibility you have out of there. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, you just look at a mountain 25 miles away and aim for it. 25 miles away, that's your target. Yeah. <laughs> and that yep. comes up fast, I'm sure. It gets bigger a little bit when you get there, but it's still, it's, it's easy to focus on that and, and go that direction. And you were saying at top speed, you guys are seeing eight seconds in a mile? It's like 7.87 seconds for 7. the last mile. 7.8 seconds for one mile, that's incredible. That's cool, I like it how this opens up, it's so slick. So I guess when you're in it, you just pull yeah, this. Yeah, you have a, a heel stop there, and then you pull up on this bar and you just hop out of it. Well, you say that you can take this apart in five minutes, and I know it requires a huge team because you guys brought a huge team. Yep. Well, let's get them out here and let's take this apart. I'm really curious to see it. This is my turn some now, huh? Oh, well, I don't know if you're going to get any of that out of me, but I can, <laughs> I can tell you what we're using on the car. So we have a, a power distribution module, which is, is a, this would be all the fuses and relays that you would have on a normal, on a, on a normal car. Yeah. And then behind that, the gold box there, that's really the controller for the, for the engine. Yeah. So that's the ECU. And then down below. ECU's here, and yep. instead of having a big bulky fuse box like we're used to, it's yep. all integrated into here. So you have to keep in mind that we run out at Bonneville where it's salty, and when you get salt and electrical things don't usually work very yeah. well together. So the ability to have that all encased in one unit and be solid state and programmable, and then the advantage of the MoTeC stuff is that it all communicates with every other MoTeC device on yeah. the CAN bus on the car. So below, below this box, we have an expansion module here that measures all our exhaust temperatures and gives us some more uh, inputs for you know standard pressures and temperatures like in the transmission things mm -hmm. like that obviously the ecu is measuring all the standard things it needs to run the engine manifold pressure fuel pressure oil pressure and everything's on the display here in the dash that's right the dash display in the front lets the driver know what he needs to know which is the flight comes on and that's pretty much that's it that's what i was going to ask how much is he actually focusing on all the other stuff at the car or how so, much is he white knuckle gripping that he's going 400 miles so per hour. so last year we had the misfortune of having a couple of fires happen in the engine bay and because this is all covered up and sealed up because these guys did such a good job hold on cut to some footage of some fire <laughs> Okay. 
because this is all sealed up and these guys did such a good job of making sure that nothing could get to the driver, he, it's on fire and he has literally no idea. I mean, it's like it's on fire starting at the two in a small corner in the backpack here. And yeah. by the time we get to the other end, it's, it's a great video, yeah. but unfortunately it's a lot of work to replace it all. So we mounted a, overnight, we mounted a backup camera here on this okay. pod that looks towards the engine bay. So after about a hundred miles an hour, I have the dash switch to the engine bay shot. So he has a nice clear picture of what's going on in the engine bay. So then we move on from there, we have the water tanks. From what we learned, when you do blow a head gasket or do have a malfunction and you pressurize the water system, anything that's square will become round. When we built a new car, we decided to make all the tanks round instead of square because if you have the misfortune, it's like an air tank, it'll just build pressure but won't straighten out. Yeah. So that's why these, there's two on top of each other, two round tanks, they look like air tanks. They have two blow-off valves, two-inch blow-off valves set at 35 pounds, so once it gets more than 35 pounds, it's supposed to blow off. Usually if you have a problem, I don't mind water blowing on the engine. Yeah, so, just to cool everything down yeah. or extinguish a fire. Yep. You can see there's a pump here, right here, this water mm -hmm. pump there. Yeah. It's got a line that goes to a sprayer right here. Okay. And when we shut the motor off after a run, it automatically sprays all the water out of that tank, all underneath the headers. Yeah. And then the one back here sprays through a nozzle and takes all the ice water out of the ice tank and sprays okay. that all forward. Wow. So usually what happens in a fire that we've learned is it all ends up in the bottom because if oil leaks and comes out of the motor and catches fire, it's always in the belly pan. So the more hmm. we can extinguish that. Then so that would just extinguish anything after the run. Here's the blocks, the pins yes. that you just have to take yes. out. And yeah, bolts. We undo the tranny, slide the transmission back, undo a couple of hoses, motor will come out. We could probably do a motor swap in just over an hour. Looks crazy to me because you can take all this out. Yes. That's, that's cool. Yeah. I really like the way that looks. What size turbos are these? They're massive. They're what they call ProMod 88s, 88 millimeter inducers. They're commonly used in NHRA ProMod drag racing. It's a, a spec turbo for the category. And they're capable of 3,000, maybe a little more mm. um, as a pair. Our, our hope is we can put them on little engines and run a lot of manifold pressure and see that 3,000. Sure. And how much boost is, is this current setup running? We'll probably run this engine at 65 pounds. That's a lot of boost. Obviously, because it's a smaller displacement engine, your mm -hmm. the pressure goes up. What might be 65 on this one might be 45 on the LS style engine. What do we have going on down here? Yeah, that's the trans controller. That is a logic board that allows a single input from the solenoid and the electronics, sends CO2 to like basically a counter. We start off in low gear, and then the ECU goes, okay, it's time to shift. Driver hits the button, or the ECU shifts it. Uh, sends one signal pulse into that counter that counts to the next set of gears changes all the CO2 routing to the next arm inside the transmission, puts it in that gear. And then the mere fact that it shoves it into the gear that's spinning faster makes it kick out the dog kick loose yeah. on the gear in front of it. And that's, it just works its way to the next one, to the wow. next one, to the next one. So this, this board is all a pneumatic logic board that allows that to happen. So that, that's purely mechanical, basically. How many gears does it have? Well, it has seven. <laughs> seven. It's seven. Seven speed Liberty, yeah. And is there ever a point where you feel like you're going to run out of gear or do you run out of power? Uh, run out we of room. usually have either of those problems. <laughs> if we times. run out of gear, we'll turn the rev limiter up. We'll never run out of power because we'll, we have these turbos. We haven't had the wastegate closed all the way yet. I like all the bracing and stuff as well and the turbos. And this stuff stays and that just leaves and the next engine goes in with a new header. And all the engines connect right here. So this all stays. Every different motor takes. This set of headers fits three of them and then we had one set for the LS. Wow. See, this is like giving me ideas for other cars and stuff as well, because that's so cool that everything can just remain and you can pull the engine out. Even intercooler, everything else all stays. So I see multiple different pumps and stuff down here as well. These are Mazir water pumps. Mm -hmm. We use these. The ice tank up here actually has tubes that go down and fill this tank full of ice, one on either side. And two of these hoses go into the intercooler goes through the intercooler, up out of the intercooler, and back into the ice tank. So it circulates water all the way down the track. Okay. And that's strictly for the intercooler? Yeah, that's just for cooling the air inlet charge. And what kind of fuel does this run? Uh, methanol. Just methanol? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of pumps on this car. So if you look in here, there's a blue pump hooked to the back of the transmission. Okay, I can see it down in there. What that does is that sucks the oil out of the bottom of the transmission, mm -hmm. puts it through this cooler, goes out of the cooler, back into a spray bar on the top of the transmission and sprays over the front three clusters. Okay. So we took our transmission temperature from about 280 to 137. And then we did the exact same with the rear end. You can see we suck it out of the bottom. We spray it on the two rear bearings. We spray it on the quick change gears and then we spray it on the ring and pinion. And that took the temperature from about 240 to about 100, I won't say 128 or something like that. Rad Rides built us the coolest wheels ever. 
they spin these things and the guy who spins them for us says they're the truest best wheel he's ever seen every every landspeed car a streamliner should have that wheel on it the tires what, what's they're mickey thompson 30 inch land speed tires i mean i don't even understand what the composite of this stuff would have to be to go that fast it's funny because we could shred these things to nothing and they still hold air they just look like they blew apart but there's still air in them so we've never ever had a flat tire what drive shaft would you run on this Is the this mark williams it's like a pro stock mm -hmm. style drive line what's it made of uh, I, it's chromoly. Chromoly? Yeah. yeah. So final drive on this car is going to be what? 2.2? 2.02. 198 to 202. Yeah. Is this stainless? Yeah. Yeah, we just added this this year. This is a, last year we had a huge problem with breather. We didn't have it sufficiently vented. So what we did this year is we added a big, huge vent tank vented everything to the vent tank so it has baffles so no oil can get anywhere. This is another Brown and Miller piece. They just sent us another one. Last week, we're going to finish and vent it all the way out to the back. So it's basically got zero back pressure for venting. Now, as far as other state safety stuff goes, there's the fire suppression for you guys was just the water? No, nope. there's no, also, no, no. actual there's fire suppression as well. There's also three canisters. There's one there, one there, and then there's one up here that's not on right now that actually can be triggered along with or separately by the cockpit or the computer. That's what I was going to say, because I saw this in here. Yeah. Right, Hit so the, then... That red switch is for the canisters. That's like a dry. It's like what they use in a computer room yeah. so it doesn't ruin all your electrical so there's but it so much takes away the oxygen so yeah. it can't sustain combustion so it doesn't ruin all the electrical stuff when we're done how much fuel do you use what's the fuel consumption right around 12 gallons yeah for five miles so what size is the, the fuel tank now it's 16 gallons 16 but you can see back there that red thing that's mm -hmm. a 19 gallon a minute waterman pump so we push the fuel forward well you guys are incredible this is like no other machine i've seen in this yard or really in person anyway it's I had no idea what to expect except when they sent me a picture of it and I was like, wow, it looks like a plane without wings, that's all I could think about. And then didn't expect to pull everything off of it and see all of this underneath it. I had no idea what these actually run. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for coming in. If I could shake all of your hands at once or we'd do like a team uh, high, high five, five here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. And Thank uh, you. I'll try and help you guys get this loaded up because it looks like it's going to take a little while. We give this to everybody that comes in here. It's pretty cool for build by it, but I don't, I don't like know if you have a really a spot for a rear view mirror to hang this thing. So <laughs> I'll just, oh, you see? What about that? That's cool. There I think that'll go. work. All right, perfect.